Hey everybody, Sean Kennedy here with Open Visual Effects, and I wanted to do another little tutorial that's kind of like an addition to my uh, uh, hard surface texture painting course, which is over here on my YouTube channel or on the blog. Uh, I have a whole playlist uh, right here. It's only got four videos in it. Um, I guess this will be the fifth. Uh, so let me show you what we're going to do. Because I've, I've been watching a lot of substance tutorials, and I really like uh, they can when they're doing like weathering and paint painting like you know ripped up edges on metal things they can make the paint kind of like peel up and I really like that effect and I wanted to do it in blender um, so I figured out a way to do it all just inside blender so here's an object right I'm gonna quickly unwrap it smart project 0 0.002 okay looks pretty good right looks great excellent uh, shading let's go ahead and set up some really fast shaders, right? New. Uh, this is going to be our shader, and I'm going to duplicate that right off the bat. I'm going to make a metal, metallic. Th so this is all stuff that um, that I go over in the uh, course. If you haven't watched the course, I would uh, I walk you through all this stuff very slowly. But here, I'm just kind of going to blaze through it um, just to get to the good part. I could have set it all up in advance, but I figure it never hurts to, uh, to, uh, you know, see it again, just as a refresher, maybe, uh, let's go even higher 80 and set this even lower 0.02. And that looks great. Yeah. Good enough. Uh, we go lower 0.01. Perfect. <laughs> um, and then the paint color, so let's go ahead and grab a fun color. What's a fun? There we go. That looks good. And for the paint, we're going to bring in, uh, I'm going to go to my, I have a little texture library and I have grunge somewhere. Grunge, grunge, grunge right here. And make these larger, medium. Find a nice grunge map to bring in. Uh, this looks fine, right? Drop that in here, plug it into the roughness, and that should look pretty decent. Ah, it looks all right. Good enough. Uh, okay, anyway, let's move on. Um, we've got two shaders now, right? We've got a metal and we've got a paint. Uh, we want to mix them with a mix shader right here. Uh, we want to drag, oh, nope, this thing like such. Um, that is uh, Node Wrangler, which I have enabled. It lets you do, uh, it's called Lazy Connect. You can just kind of get in the ballpark. Uh, you can see it kind of lights up. So uh, undo that. That's pretty cool. It also lets you just hit, uh, I want to switch these. So I can just hit Alt S, switches them, um, which is pretty cool. Turn this up to 100 or 1. And now we've got all our paint and our metal is underneath to be able to paint and reveal that we need a texture image texture and plug that in right there let's go new we're gonna go four we're gonna let's do 8k what do we say 8k times eight okay we're gonna call this uh, paint where oh one we're gonna make it white because we want at first we want to see the paint so where white is there will be paint wherever there's black there will be metal you'll be seen through it and we're going to make it 32-bit float be just because we're going to be running it down to the bump nodes. Um, and it's just good to have a little extra depth if you need it. So uh, there we go. Let's plug that in and we have our thing. We're ready to paint, right? Uh, as long as we paint on this map. Let's go over to texture painting. Uh, I've been setting this up a little bit different than I used to. Uh, I like having the map here still. I like seeing what's going on even if I don't paint on it very much. Um, and I also like opening up the shader nodes right here sometimes. Uh, it starts to get a little cluttered, but um, but you can always control spacebar to uh, make something large temporarily. So, uh, or, you know, something take over the screen. Uh, the other thing I've been doing is moving this over here and splitting this, making this another properties panel. Go to my active tool, and then this one. I leave on the textures because I like to paint with textures a lot. So, right, speaking of painting with textures, here's what we did in the old the old course, right? Right click in here, set the color to black, and I'm painting on this map, which is selected right here. Um, these are all your layers. If you want to paint on one, just select it and you're good to go. So if we paint, right, we see our metal coming through. 
da da da. Same old thing that's in the old course, right? Looks great. Um, we could always make a a, uh, a texture, which looks much better. Go Voronoi colors, color ramp, turn it on. Uh, turn the size up a little bit like that. And crush it down a bit like that. I'm looking like right here more so than up here because I like... I like this view better a little bit. Yeah, see how it's kind of eating away a little? And then if you turn on, uh, if you move it from tiled to random, turn on random, and turn this down so it's not 360, uh, now you'll get some pretty cool stuff, right? Uh, painting, you're gonna get this broken up edge, and every time you click or move, um, it's kind of randomly rotating it a little bit. So it really breaks it up nicely, so you can get this really cool breakup. Still doesn't look great, right? In the old course, what we did was we threw in a color ramp. Uh, it's still a valid, uh, a valid way to work. Throw in the color ramp, start crushing it down, and you get your nice, your nice crushed edges. The more, uh, the more you bring it in, the more you'll get these, uh, you'll get these little flaky bits that stick around, right? And now you can paint that, and it also, it actually looks like it's wearing it away super fun technique right now you're doing live painting we can make this even better though right in the old course we ran this down to the bump map um you know what else we can do actually let me set this up too because it just it looks good the more that's happening the better it looks right so throw in another mix shader right here throw in a diffuse shader which is just a color and let's move this guy back here to keep that guy right there um uh do that do that and do this we're going to have that same map drive this right if we set this to black just so we can see it for now can't really see it uh, so if we throw in um, actually just duplicate this guy this color ramp throw it over here uh, again we haven't got to the good part yet we're getting there we're getting there I promise I promise uh, turn this way down Turn this way down. I just wanted to, I wanted to look good when we do it, so I want to set up as much as we can. All right, now we can set that to a whatever you want your underlying color to be. Uh, maybe we go for a darker red, like they primed it with a dark red first, and then and then got in there with that. Right, so that still works. Right, uh, everything still looks cool. You turn this way down, and now you're. Um, not inside of it uh, you know it now takes a little longer you can see more of that red as you paint through it looks pretty cool right so there you go uh, now how do we get this cool bump what I want is that paint peeling technique um, so what we have to do is kind of alter this paint map that we're using right so it's got if you look at that paint map uh, it's got a lot of gray values in there a lot of values just between one and zero we're going to use that and kind of flip them around a little bit. So let's duplicate another color ramp and plug in that and drag this down here. So we're going to do the same kind of thing where we're going to use this map to drive our bump map uh, on the paint. We're just going to change that bump map uh, or you know that map that's being fed into that bump a little differently so we get a paint peeling effect. So plug our color into the height. And now when we look at this, the whole idea is, uh, if we reset this, right? White is high, black is low. Uh, you can always invert it, but for what we're looking at right here, white is high, black is low. Uh, anything over black, over zero, is high. Uh, one, white, is the highest, anything in between. So what we gotta do is change this, the highest part, like most of the paint, shouldn't be white. It could be gray, right? It, it, we're still gonna get the same effect right like that and we'll still get that same effect but what if we could make these edges white and have it so they look like they come up uh, and that we just add in another uh, another ramp or uh, whatever these are called what are these called markers or pins I don't know what they are but crank that up to white and now you get this great um, you get this great effect where it's kind of outlining it a bit and you can mess with this a bit. You can crank up that black in between there. Uh, 
You could even add another one if you wanted, probably. If you wanted that to be white, too. Kind of extend it out a little bit more. All right, so you can see, like, as I, uh, as I slide this around, it kind of goes out further and comes in more. So you can really use this to dial in how you want this bump to look. So now if we go to our back to our main shader, pull out a little bit, uh, that looks horrible because it's all cranked up. But if you put this to like 0.3, you start getting a real nice paint peeling up effect, right? Uh, and it's all interactive. So you can, you can paint, if you keep your brush nice and low, as you paint, you're just getting, first you're getting the paint peeling, and then as you paint stronger and stronger, you'll get you'll get wear through to the primer, then you'll wear through to the metal, uh, and it's all just procedural, it's all just working. And you can turn this way down and make it real big and kind of, uh, you know, if you don't like how something's looking, you can just kind of, as long as you've got this random on, change it once in a while, you get a different, uh, just make sure you're like, the seed that it's using is a little different or the pattern. Uh, and you can just do that. It looks great, right? Totally works. So I was very happy with that. So I wanted to share that. Uh, you can also, if you wanted a different look, you don't have to use this Veronoi. You could use, uh, you know, like a Musgrave or something and get a get a totally different look to, to what you're doing. Um, let's see here. Turn this way up again and turn this down again. So yeah, you can get a different kind of paint peeling effect happening. Um, and you can combine them, you know. Maybe you do maybe you do some like this and then you do switch to something else. Uh, you know, and there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of different maps you can play with. Uh, yeah, it looks good though, right? I was pretty happy when I figured it out. Uh, yeah, that looks great. Um, so you see when you really zoom in there, you can start to see like some pixelation. I think that's what the, uh, I made it 8K, we made it 32-bit. I think I was trying to compensate for some of that. If that, you know, if you make it 2K and not 32-bit, you're going to see these bumps, those little pixelations all over the place. Um, but otherwise, uh, pretty cool paint peeling technique, right? Works pretty good. So anyway, there's an update, and I hope that's, uh, more fun for you and opens up some more doors for you as far as uh, how you're um, using texture painting and uh, just staying inside a blender. No need to go to substance. I mean, substance makes it, uh, you know, a whole lot easier with just having, uh, you don't have to be in the node view ever, you know, and setting up your texture manually. There's just buttons for new layer, new layer. And we kind of have that right here. You know, you can just click in here and make a new layer for whatever you want. Um, and it'll, it just plugs it in wherever you want, and then you can start painting. So uh, that's something. Another thing people would always talk about, I guess I should show this real quick before I go, um, is uh, I got a lot of comments over the years over, how do you add more maps? Like, what if I want to put uh, dust or oil or something else over it? Just keep doing this. Um, this whole technique of, of a mix shader, right? Just duplicate the mix shader. Um, if you just want a color, you could just do something as simple as a diffuse. Uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it except for maybe if you're painting like just more grunge or, or, or something very basic. Um, throw in another texture to paint on. This setup right here, uh, come on, hook up, hook up, boom. New, and we'll make this one, um, select them both, please. No. Uh, divided by two, just make, the, oh gosh, what did I just do? Divided by four, that's why. Um, grime, uh, matte, and white, and th this one doesn't have to be 32 bit, hit okay. So this basic setup right here, a map, uh, a mix shader, and then some shader or color going into it, is literally anything. Uh, if you want this to be, you know, if you wanted to paint like some rust, right, you could just go in here and make make a nice rust color. And uh, as long as you've got this guy selected, um, hmm, come back. Where'd it go? Single image material. There it is, grand matte. So you got to get this to update and show you your, your matte. Uh, and there it is. 
and uh, oh you know what we should have started with black right we should have started with black so if we do that fill it with black it should go away then we can go back to white and turn it back up to white and now you can paint in um, turn that way up turn this way up now you can paint in grime and dirt or whatever you want and you can just change that on the fly right whatever color you want it to be um, and you can change this on the fly. I mean, this your brush is kind of like your, uh, you know, just uh, exactly how you want to do it. So anyway, that's how you do that. And if you wanted that to be oil, instead of using a diffuse, just use a uh, use a principled, and turn up refraction or whatever you you know plug some a color ramp into it and all kinds of reflective stuff and all that, and then you get oil. So. This setup right here is basically like paint anything you want, add as many layers as you want. Um, so yeah, cool. There you go. A little extra uh, for your, uh, oh, this isn't very impressive. But uh, anyway, the technique, I hope, is impressive. And uh, yeah, let me know some comments. Let me know uh, any tips or any uh, adjustments you may have or improvements to this. I'd love to hear them. I love this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I will uh, see you in the next one.